I wanted to write for the young adult audience because I feel like they're at an age where they are mature enough where they can understand difficult concepts. And I think they also tend to be curious um, about you know, questions that they have and things that they don't understand that are not properly being explained to them. And the reconstruction era is a period in American history that is given short shrift uh, for the most part in schools. And so most people, most adults, most young people, a lot, most people don't know a lot about that period in our country's history. But I think it is an incredibly consequential uh, moment in time because it, it was when America really stood at a crossroads and had some very difficult decisions to make about which direction we wanted to go as a nation. And did we want to uh, heal from our past wounds and really move forward united as one nation indivisible or did we want to keep some of the the divisions and the you know the old ways of of white supremacy and uh, oppression of of african americans alive and and i think that the reconstruction era is so fascinating because it really started with making moves towards the former where uh, you know you've got these monumental changes to the United States Constitution um, with the Reconstruction Amendments, you have the passage of the Thirteenth, Fourteenth, and Fifteenth Amendments uh, in the late eighteen uh, sixties. The Thirteenth Amendment abolished slavery, except for those duly convicted of a crime. The Fourteenth Amendment granted everyone born in the United States or naturalized in the United States U.S. citizenship, which was not at all a given before uh, that, the 14th Amendment. And it also gave everyone the right to due process and equal protection under the laws, which certainly did not exist, especially for African-Americans before the passage of the 14th Amendment. And then you also had the 15th Amendment, which said people couldn't be prohibited from voting um, because of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. And so those three amendments fundamentally transformed, I think, America, into the nation that it said it was at its founding, but in reality was not. Um, and so I think there's so much, there was so much potential at that point in time for our country actually becoming the, and stepping into the ideals, the beautiful ideals that existed at our founding, but it were, they were really ideals that only existed for in reality for a very small segment of um, people living in the United States at the time. And so I, I see the Reconstruction Era as this period of just like unbelievable idealism and potential. Um, the, you know, as I mentioned, I worked as an attorney, a civil rights attorney at the US Department of Justice and the US Department of Justice was founded in 1870, um, part for, for in large part to, protect and enforce the newly uh, passed civil rights of, of African Americans, because at the end of the Civil War, 4.4 million African Americans were emancipated from slavery, which is a huge number of people. And it, you know, it changed, it changes the demographics of our nation, of our voting populace, of what our uh, representative government should look like once you actually start including everyone and you're not treating a huge number of people as if they're property or livestock essentially is how they were, you know, African-Americans were treated before emancipation. And so, so you have all of these institutions that, um, that or remain incredibly important in our modern era today that you can trace back to that mo those moments of idealism in the reconstruction era. Um, also historically black colleges and universities, the vast majority of them were founded um, in, the, in the years, decades immediately after the civil war. And so I think that's also so important, especially because during slavery, African-Americans were uh, prohibited from learning how to read and write. And so what, what higher education um, you know, the opportunities that that presents is, is transformational for families' trajectories and, and, you know, and has, and has such a profound effect, I think, to this day. Um, another example is that K through 12 schools, uh, public, public education in particular in the South didn't exist before the Reconstruction era. 
And, um, and I think that's largely because if you were a wealthy white person, you could afford to hire tutors. And if you were a poor white person, then you probably weren't getting much of an education anyway. And if you were an African American, it was illegal for you to get an education. So what, you know, there wasn't any need for public schools, but one of the biggest things that the uh, uh, newly emancipated African Americans advocated for was public education so that everyone could have access to um, you know, an opportunity to better themselves. And, and so, yeah, so I just think that there's like, there's so much that traces back to that period that we are not aware of and we don't give credit to. And I think it's a, a time period worth studying um, a little closer. This author interview was produced through a partnership of the Grateful American Foundation and WETA. For more author interviews, please visit adlit.org.